Hello, in today's video, I'm going to show you a way of keeping your camera cool. What am I on about? Find out after I've said, roll titles. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. I make a lot of video content and I've got two cameras. I've got the one that I'm looking at now and uh, I've got this one up here that does all my overhead shots. Now the thing is, especially when I'm recording for a longer period of time, this overhead camera, which is a Sony ZV-1, it overheats and basically that just makes it stop working. Now it's a common problem with this camera and other cameras of its sort of price and specification where it just gets very hot when it's recording in 4K. And that's fine, you know, I don't have broadcast quality cameras, but it seems to be getting worse. And I think I've got a solution. Well, we'll find out in this video if it's a solution. What is it? Well, it's this. No, not a white cardboard box. It's what's in this white cardboard box. What's in this white cardboard box? Da-da! Now this is a Moman cooling camera fan. And it does what it says on the tin, really. It's designed to cool your camera. Now, I'm obviously going to have to get this camera off here and install this onto it at some point. But before we do that, we'll have a little look at it and have a little play with it and see how it works. Now, I got this from Amazon and it was around about 40 pounds. There are different makes sort of that are available and they're all roughly around the same price. Some are a little bit more expensive, some are not, but they all generally adhere to the same principle and they are probably essentially the same thing, just in a slightly different casing. Now also, these are available for a wide range of cameras. This one in particular is designed for the Sony ZV-1 but there are different ones that are available depending on what camera you have. Because this is a common issue for cameras recording in 4K, it just gets very hot very quickly. And the main camera does suffer, but that's actually got a 30 minute recording limit anyway. So after 30 minutes, it'll stop recording because it says it's the maximum file size or something like that. But this one just turns off randomly and sometimes I don't see the little temperature signal flashing on the screen. And yeah, it just goes off mid talk, which is a bit annoying. But hopefully this will eliminate that. So yeah, there's the unit itself. So let's just have a quick look in the instructions. So we have to select the mounting clip according to the camera model. So we've got two different mounting clips included in the box as well as a USB-C cable. And insert the left-hand side of the fan into the notch of the display first then press it inward to finish okay access the type c power cord long press to turn on short press of the power button to switch gears so yeah you can change the gear adjustment which i guess is the speed adjustment now this particular model the one that i've got you can actually set the temperature of the cooling plate which is pretty cool um so yeah, we can adjust the temperature that we want the plate to be. I mean, I think you'd probably just want it at the lowest at all times, but anyway. And there's a different model that just has a high and low speed. That's about it. Apparently the noise it makes is uh, 26 decibels. So obviously you need it to be fairly quiet. You don't want it being picked up on camera. But to be honest, this camera actually has a shotgun microphone pointing at me on it as a sort of secondary audio backup. So really and truly, it shouldn't be picked up on my mics or anything like that. Now, something that is interesting about this product is, I thought that it had some kind of battery inside it because it mentioned like a runtime of 60 minutes and 120 minutes, depending on the fan speed. But that isn't the case. I think obviously, maybe on the Amazon listing, they've confused it with a different model. But yeah, this does not have a battery in. The unit itself is just this thing here and it's powered by USB-C, which is fine, that's okay. I mean, I do actually have a spare USB-C cable on my camera rig that I can plug this into, so it's not too much of a problem. But obviously, if you're filming out and about, you do need to take into account the fact that you'll need a, a five volt source to power this. Although if you've got, if you're filming out and about, you've probably got some kind of battery pack on you. And I think this is a two meter USB-C charging cable. So that'll get up most tripods and things like that. 
with relative ease. So yeah, um, I'm not really sure. Oh no, look, there's more brackets. We have more brackets. There's four brackets. Oh, okay, so it's really hard to see, but it does have some writing on there telling us what camera it's suitable for. I did think that um, this might just be just blowing down onto the back here and just cooling the back. But I think it's got one of those sort of plates that I've seen Vince show in a couple of his videos. There are a plate where one side of it is super cool and the other side is quite warm. And I think they might be used in the Xbox fridges. That's maybe where I've seen it in one of Vince's videos. They do have like a technical name. It's something plate, um, but I'll put that on the screen what it is. So if we get in a five volt USB-C supply and press and hold the power button, there we go. Fan starts spinning. And this, I believe, is the desired temperature of the plate on the bottom. So if we press this, we can make the plate cooler. And oh my goodness, that is actually, <laughs> it's actually really cold. That's mad. So yeah, it's expelling air from these side vents. And that is like, that is really cold. Yeah, I, it must be some sort of, it must be one of those plates because that's not just the air from this fan blowing onto that at all, I don't think. That's got very cold very quickly. That's insane. I've never seen anything like it. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me get my thermal imaging camera, my top on TC view, which I did a video about. Um, I'll stick a link to it up in the corner. Let's have a little look at what the thermal imaging camera is saying. Right, so that's recording now and I'll put it up on the screen. So you can see it up there. Oh my goodness, we've got a cold spot of 7.8 degrees. 7.2, 7.1, 6.9. Yeah, it's sort of fluctuating, it's going up a bit. You can sort of hear the fan change in tempo and pitch. When it gets really cold, like, yeah, 8.3, it's getting faster and faster, and then it seems to sort of let off a bit and the temperature creeps up. That's obviously how it's regulating the temperature. Now what's it kicking out at the side here? Okay, so it's getting quite warm at the side. We've got a hot spot of about 33 degrees. Again, not stupidly hot, but yeah, you can feel like warm air, but that's okay. But Jesus, man, that's mental. That is absolutely insane. Oh my goodness, it's actually, there's actually like, it's actually condensation, it's got so cold. Maybe you don't want to run it at like the lowest temperature. But I don't know. I think for the purposes of this testing, maybe I'm going to run it at the coldest setting. I think what we need to do now is reconfigure things slightly and see how this installs onto the camera. So to do that, I've got to take this camera down and um, put this on the back of it. So what I'll do is I'll keep this camera here, but I'll stick the GoPro onto my desk so you can see a bit more what's happening here because I don't have an overhead camera. Love it, okay, right, yeah. Let's have a little rejig about and see if we can get this installed on the camera and get it cooling it down. Okay, so now we're set up on a slightly different angle here. And uh, yeah, this is my camera, the Sony ZV-1. Mostly above my head, but you know, it does sometimes get to go out and about as well. And uh, yeah, I've got the screen flipped out at the moment. And this is the area that's going to be called. Now it says something on the instructions about having the notch on the left, but it doesn't actually sit very well like that. There's a bit of a gap. Let's spin it around and see. Yeah, that's better. That fits a treat. So obviously this sort of is just a kind of temporary fixing. You're not damaging the camera in any way. You're not invalidating a warranty. So yeah, don't, don't think you've got to damage your camera to get this in. I mean, because it is like a pressure fit, I don't know how I'd feel about going around wandering with a gimbal or something out and about filming and whipping it in and out of my bag. I don't really know. And then in theory, 
this should just go into the little thing. Yeah, there we go. So that is now in. So obviously it does add a bit more sort of depth and weight to the camera, but nothing hideous. And then, yeah, we can just plug it in and start it up. Get that temperature down. Right, so that's recording now, and I've got the microphone plugged in. And what I'll do is I will cut to the audio on this mic here to see if it can pick up the noise from the fan. Um, I won't like adjust the level or anything. I'll just leave it at the standard level. It comes out of the camera. So let's see if you can hear it on the camera or not. No, you can't hear it. That's pretty good. Now, I think before we continue the video, we actually maybe need to test it. So what I'm thinking is maybe we run two tests. So I'm gonna let the camera cool down completely and start it recording without this guy on. I'm gonna have it plugged into the power as well. So it's got a constant source of power so the battery doesn't run out. And yeah, we'll just leave it running normally without the fan on and see how long it records for. I'm thinking probably based on my experience, it'll record for about 25 minutes and then it'll thermally shut down. And then what I'll do is I'll let the camera again cool right down and then I'll run it with this on and then see how much difference this makes, if any. I think it should make a fair bit of difference. But yeah, what I'll do is I'll set up maybe like a time lapse with my GoPro and like we'll have a timer on the camera as well. I've got my iPad here, so that might work out quite well. And yeah, we could compare the two. So I'll tell you what, while those comparisons are running, I'm going to shout out the awesome people that have joined my channel, either via Patreon, Facebook, or YouTube. Now joining the channel costs from 99p a month, and it just helps me buy stuff like this to test on camera. So the more people that join, or the higher levels they join at, the more things that I can afford to buy to show you on camera. So if you wanna help support this channel financially, then become a channel member. And if you don't, then maybe just consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. So yeah, if you wanna shout out in an upcoming video, then make sure you join the channel. So yeah, let's run this with it being recorded without the cooling fan on and see how long it lasts for. I bet it's not overly long. And then we'll add the cooler on and see how long it records. And then I'll come back tomorrow, or a few seconds for you, and we can look at the results. Hopefully they're good, because otherwise this video will be pointless. But it won't be pointless because you will know that this product is a bad idea. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's go to the time-lapse and shout out all the awesome channel members. So first up, we've got our kit fans who are Matt Lovey's JRC Electrical, For The Burbs, Wayne Cornish, Mike Cass, Rob Lynn, Scott Made A Thing, Michael Wood, Draco MacGyver, Rebecca, Tom Wood, and Chelsea B. And I love the early birds. They are Dean Ball, Sean at Cablesmith Electrical, Tim Salt, Sorcerer Stan, and Mark Z. Oh, I think it's about to finish. Yep, it's finished. So we had 36 minutes there on our first run without the cooler. Let's put the cooler on and see how long it lasts for. And while this is running, let me tell you about our Kip lovers. They love me so much, and I love them too. They are Bella Webster, Stez Six Picks, Lawrence, Scott Kendall, and Props Retro Fix. Then right at the top, they are the cream of the crop. That is Becky Becky Boobar and Alan Green. They are our Kip Nutters. Thank you so much, Becky and Alan, for your top tier support, and big love to all my channel members, no matter what level you're at. Anyway, let's see how long it lasts without the cooler. I think it's going to be impressive. Well, there we go. If it wasn't immediately clear from the time lapse, without the cooler on, recording a video, it lasted for 36 minutes. But with the cooler on, it lasted for two hours and 15 minutes. Now, the reason that it didn't actually go any further wasn't because it thermally shut down. It was because there wasn't enough space on the memory card, so the recording just stopped. Yeah, that's never happened before. There's a 128 gigabyte card in this camera, and I've never had a video file run for so long because the camera just sort of thermally shuts down after about 35 minutes. So that is pretty impressive. 
Now, if you've got this far in the video, just to pay attention, let me know by putting, whoa, that's cool, in the comments. We'll see who's actually paying attention and who isn't. I, I imagine, in theory, if I had a bigger memory card, it would have just kept on going and going and going because there was no reason for it to stop. It was just keeping the camera super cool. And I did actually get a little bit of footage where I filmed the camera with the thermal imaging camera so I could see a comparison between not having the cooler on and having the cooler on. And the camera did get very hot without the cooler being there. And then when the cooler was there, it was a much more bearable temperature. And it must have been because the camera just lasted. I am slightly annoyed with myself that I didn't invest in one of these before because it essentially sort of just limits the thermal damage done to the camera because there's obviously maybe some kind of thermal paste or something similar to that on the kind of processing unit inside the camera. And I imagine all the heat over time would make that dry out because it's just getting so hot and they, it does sort of get a bit crusty after a while. And if I'd have had this cooler from the get-go, then that would have meant that the camera would be sort of kept cool constantly and sort of had a less, I guess, stressful life. It's absolutely worth the money. If you're using your camera in a similar way to how I am, or if you're sort of away from a desk and filming sort of more static shots, you know, on a tripod, absolutely use it. It just keeps the camera cool and happy. Yeah, it's not ideal if you're sort of running a gun in and you want to flap the screen down because you can't do that because there's this in the way and you'd crush the screen. And obviously it does add a bit of bulk and a little bit more faff because you've got to power it. But for me really, it's ideal because my camera's just static and above my head and can be powered pretty easily. And even if I do take it outside and film a video, I can easily hook up a USB-C connection to it to keep the camera cool. So yeah, it definitely feels like a worthwhile investment. Obviously, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, this isn't the only one available. There are lots of different brands and they look very similar, but I can certainly say that this Moman one does what it's meant to. A very weird random video, but I thought it was interesting and something good to share with you guys. So hopefully those of you who use cameras can protect them a little bit more. Well, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Who knew that this 40 quid bit of metal could uh, hopefully prolong the life of this camera a little bit and hopefully do the same for you. So if you found this video interesting, please make sure you give it a like. Maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I'm on the path to 20,000 subscribers and it would be great to have you along for the journey. But yeah. I don't think I've got anything else to say, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.